Arsenal 2, Wolves 1, uh, absolutely gutted. Um, it was a real sucker punch to concede the way we did. Um, there was a sense of inevitability about it. I think we, we all know that Arsenal were the better team. Um, Arsenal have become a bit of a, a bit of a joke over the last few years, a bit of a meme, but realistically, they actually are a really strong team at the minute. Um, really, really frustrating to lose in that way, obviously, um, given the importance of the game. To lose six points to Arsenal over the past two, three weeks is is really damaging, really. Um, you know, overall, the season's going far better than any of us would have expected. Um, but at the same time, that's not that's not to say that we can't be, you know, upset or annoyed at the performance um we didn't play great it's not it's not it, it wasn't horrendous it was nearly a masterclass you know we, we've tried to keep we've tried to keep Arsenal out for for 80 odd minutes um their qualities you know sort of come through at the end um it's very uncharacteristic for us to throw away a lead like that um so that's really disappointing but again right through the team I, I don't think anyone really can sort of hold you know say that they they, they played as well as they could, but it's 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 one of those things we uh you know we'll have to move on to West Ham. Um I've seen a lot of things about Raoul online on Twitter. I've got to be honest, I feel a bit sorry for the bloke because <laughs> let's be honest, he, he's not playing he's not playing as well as we know he can, but at the same time it's a bit of a graveyard shift playing up front for Wolves. It must be one of the most difficult jobs in football. Um I'm not trying I'm trying not to be too negative, but we don't create chances. He's missed one chance in the first half, he snatched it a little bit. That can happen as a striker. But at the same time, you know, realistically, what do we do for him? We don't get the ball into him, we don't create carve out chances for him. Um so you know, I, I don't think it's all it's all justified that the sort of almost anger that I'm seeing for him. But we again he does need he does need to start creating chances for himself, I suppose, but at the same time it is a bit of a graveyard shift up there. Um, I would expect changes for West Ham. Um, I think he'll probably freshen it up a little bit. It's a shame tomato has gone off injured because I think he's been playing really well this season. Um, and I actually think he was having a good game again yesterday. I think first half, well, first 20 seconds, he could have given away a penalty. But after that, I just I always trust Tomato this season. I, I think defensively, he's improved a lot. Um, and going forward, I think he looked a real outlet yesterday whenever we did get over the halfway line. Um, so yeah, I think there'll probably be changes. Um, I think if Neto's fit, I'd probably. Well, I'll say that I don't know who you're going to take out the team. To be honest with you, but yeah, that's a. I suppose that's a decision for 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 Bruno to make. Um, I think it's interesting that Trincao just seems so far down the pecking order at the moment. I'm not saying he should have come on yesterday at all, but potentially throw Fabio in there. I just I just think we need to freshen it up where possible. If Samuel is injured, we'll get Johnny in. Um, but yeah, it's obviously disappointing, but it's it's not it's not actually going to define our season. Realistically, getting in the top four was always going to be a massive ask. And I'm not saying it's all over, but it is going to be difficult. I do think it's going to be Arsenal and Man United fighting for that fourth spot. And I think we're going to be in a battle for sort of sixth, seventh with Tottenham and West Ham. Um, but, you know, again, we would have snatched your hand off for that at the start of the season. It's fine margins today. I suppose you look at the Leicester game, we definitely got the, the look of the green in that. Um, you know, we Leicester were the better team than us and we've come away with three points. They probably feel how we feel today. Um, so, yeah, very disappointed. But at the same time, it's not going to define our season onwards and upwards. Right. Well, it is the day after uh, the night before. Uh, it was a nightmare getting home from the game last night. I had to walk uh, 25, 30 minutes away uh, with, to Finsbury Park with a bunch of Arsenal fans who were jubilant, to say the least. Um and they deserved it, honestly, because I felt the way that we approached the game after we scored the goal was pretty shambolic, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of performances in there yesterday that um, were not up to our usual standard, for sure. And Arsenal definitely deserved um, at least a draw, if not the win. Um, and it hurts me to say that, because we've been in some pretty good form recently. But to be honest, I think the... Uh, the Leicester result kind of papered over the cracks and definitely uh, yesterday evening we weren't at our best again. So um, we seem to go through these sort of dips in form um, every now and then and then a big result and we kind of kick on from it. But um, yesterday was just not just not that great. Kilman, uh, Cody, Sice, all three of them were um, really wasteful in possession, didn't want to keep the ball, kept hoofing it up forward um, to... Uh, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say that that Raul didn't 
didn't offer anything or but what can you do when you're just the ball is hoofed up to you over and over again um you're not going to win all of those headers every single time he was trying his best um but when you have no service as a striker yeah it can look like you had a poor game but we don't really have that many better options on the bench i mean fabio silva would, would probably not have done um even half of what Rao was doing in terms of the hold-up play and getting other people involved. Um, yeah, Neto should have scored his opportunity, uh, and we could be talking about a whole different result here, and Huang seems to be the only one that can put the ball to the back of the net at the moment, so for me, he has to start, because where else are the goals coming from? Um, maybe maybe we could even try... The, the two up front seems to work okay, but we could try like Huang and, Huang and Pedence up front, maybe. I don't know. Um, but at the moment... We just sort of look uh, like we have a lack, a lack of confidence um, up front. So not our not our day yesterday. They deserved it. The atmosphere that they created at the end after they scored, obviously, was pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah, that place was rocking. And um, it, it felt like they pulled the ball into the back of the net by the end of the game. So um, a disappointing day for us. Um but hopefully now we can move on to West Ham, put that one behind us and kick on because that's a massive, massive game now. And if we win that, all will be forgiven. So, um, yeah, I just I hope we can find some sort of uh, spark from somewhere because that was a really, really uh, dull performance. Hello, Talking Wolves. So it's the morning after the night before. A really sucker punch, devastating last minute uh, loss against Arsenal 2-1. And uh, I think, on reflection, we got what we deserved, to be honest. Obviously, it's gutting to lose like that, but after we went 1-0 up from Huang, we kind of just sat back and hang on. They had, like, 26 shots, didn't they, to our six. Um, we were a bit... They they pressed us really well, didn't they? So we were a bit all over the shop. Um, a panicky, and it, you could just feel the goals were coming, although it didn't. It took them to the 80th minute to equalise, which is a good goal, by the way. Um, you could feel it coming in the ground, um, I don't know what it was like on TV, but you could definitely feel it coming in the ground, and obviously they went mad again, crazy celebrations at full time. Just on the team as well, I was surprised he went 3-4-3, um, but obviously it turned out a good decision because Huang did score, but I was surprised, I thought he'd go free midfield Bruno, so maybe he got that wrong. But I wish we wouldn't have, wouldn't have sat back so much after we were 1-0 down, because although Arsenal are a good team, they're probably the best out of the bunch chasing the top four, aren't they really? But it was still gutting to lose like that. And I'm just hoping against West Ham, we do press them and go at them a bit more and not just sit back, even if we do score early. So, yeah, very devastating, gutted. And I've just got to say as well, coming out the ground as well, the Arsenal fans were like idiots. Um, it was obviously kicking off a bit. I got into a bit of a bloody scuffle. Um, but yeah, idiot. I don't know what it is with the Arsenal fans now. There's this weird rivalry become, hasn't there, off the back of uh, the 1-0... Loss at Molyneux, the way they celebrated, obviously Neves and Cody's comments, and it's created a bit of a rivalry, which has come out of nowhere, to be honest. But yeah, their fans were idiots, to be honest. But good win for them, obviously. They were buzzing, and it just shows how far we've come, doesn't it, when they celebrate like that, the two times they've beat us. It's obviously huge wins for them, and that just makes, shows how good we are. We're still punching above our weight. Uh, which, the scene's not over, obviously, if we go and beat West Ham. If we lose, obviously, that'd be gutting, but if we go and beat them, we're still laughing. So, yeah, disappointing loss, sucker punch. But in the end, I think they did deserve the win with the way we just sat back. But I just want to talk about Raul as well. Raul Jimenez getting loads of stick for his performance and for taking a selfie with the Mexican fans who are in the Arsenal end. And I'm going to lay off him a bit. Um, we always knew he wasn't, wasn't going to be the same after his injury. It's a miracle he's actually even playing. Obviously, his first return to the Emirates. And he is struggling, yes. And he's not running the the line, you know, like holding the line well as a striker. People are saying get Fabio in, but I think give him a few more chances, and then eventually, I think if he carries on, then he'll have to be dropped. But let's stick with him. He's still got a goal and, and an assist in him, hasn't he? As he's shown in recent weeks. So there we go. I probably would like to see us to go back to free in midfield, which I didn't think I'd be saying against West Ham, Pedence and Raul up front, or even Huang and Raul, or he might surprise us and play Neto, Huang and Pedence. A free up front. You don't know. He might try. He might try something different. Bruno. He's shown he's. Uh, he can make a decision when he wants to. He's brave to do it. So, yeah. Thanks for having me on Talking Walls. Very gutted. Still gutted now. The morning after. And let's hope we uh, get the win against West Ham. Cheers for having me on. Right then. Going to keep this one uh, short and sweet today. But yeah, not a good performance at all. 
probably one of the worst performances I've seen us do this year actually. Um, yeah, I get why we went 3-4-3. I think the three up top was to try and press Arsenal high because you can get at Arsenal in their back line. And I think for the start of the game we sorted them really well at that. And then 15-20 minutes in we really started to fade and all of a sudden couldn't get anywhere near any of them really. Um, we had opportunities to score goals, we still did. I think we still had more, probably more opportunities to score than they did. Not saying we're the better team by any way, because they were definitely the better side on the day. Um, I actually got to give them a lot of credit. I thought they played really well. People like Odegaard, we couldn't get near him last night. He was he was brilliant. Like pff, credit where it's due. Um, as soon as Pepe came on, I said he's going to score. I just knew it. You could tell. Uh, the goal was coming for a long time. Good if we couldn't have held on to that one-one. I'd have took a point all day away from home at Arsenal. Um, but yeah, to concede in that manner in the in the the last minute was. We'll say frustrating to be political, but yeah, I can't really single out many Wolves players for good performances yesterday. Um, shame for Samad to go off injured because I think he's been performing well. Not his best game yesterday, but again, not singling him out because no one was. Huang scored the goal, really good reading of that, and that's not an easy finish, but he made it look easy. Um, but then I think the only other time I saw him was when he had the one straight away in the start of the second half where Ramsdale saves. So yeah, apart from that, I, I didn't really recognise him being there. Uh, yeah, like I say, the less we say about it, the better, but uh, really disjointed yesterday. Couldn't get any flow going at all. Like I said, we had chances, but yeah, referee's performance as well. I'm going to touch on that because that was abysmal. Um, I was annoyed with it last night, but I was more annoyed when I was on the train back home watching some of the videos and, and you realise how many more mistakes he made that you didn't even see. But can't keep moving about refs. We had chances to score. We didn't take them. It's bit us and we didn't play well either. You can't sit back for that amount of time during a game. But yeah. West Ham away on Sunday. Hopefully we get a better result there and uh, I'm not watching highlights on the way I'm thinking what if again. On to the next one. Ah, heartbreaker. Really, really tough result to take that. Arsenal 2, Wolves 1 and uh, yeah, just a, an off performance. Really, really off performance. Strange one. Uh, we haven't seen us really lose a game like that in a, in a very long time. In fact, 45 games it was uh, since we'd actually lost a game from a winning position. Um, so I guess you can say credit for keeping the run going that long. I thought today we were just miles off the pace. I mean, where do you even start with it? There's so much that happened in that game that was uh, uh, controversial and, and disappointing. I think, first of all, we'll start off with the lineup. 3-4-3, uh, three, three. I was actually happy to see 3-4-3. Three, three. I thought that it was good to see us go for it a little bit more, and I do think we look a lot quicker uh, on the counter-attack with the 3-4-3. But during the first half, I think it became more and more apparent that we were just being completely overran in midfield. And credit to Arsenal, their pressing was excellent off the ball as well. Um, really quick on the on the ball, finding spaces really well, playing it in between our midfield and defence and, and moving the ball quickly and using a lot of good little, bit, little bits of trickery to get in, in and around our penalty area and we really struggled to cope. And then when we got on the ball, they were really good at closing us down quickly and I think we struggle to deal with teams that do that. Um, Brentford and Crystal Palace come to mind as two particularly bad defeats and I think this one was pretty similar. Um, really decent goal. I know it was an Arsenal mistake, but again, it was good pressing from us, good play from... Uh, Raul, to, I think it was, to win the ball back and then a really tidy finish from Huang. Um, but then after that, there's really nothing of note to talk about. I thought we were really, really poor. Should have gone 2-0 up. Jimenez missing an absolute sitter. Um, I think some conversations need to be had about him. I know he's he, he does contribute to goals every now and again, but I think his overall performance and, and play has been really, really poor. And today, he offered absolutely nothing yet again. I think it's very harsh on Fabio Silva to not get more minutes. If he's sitting there on the bench looking at him and his point performances like that, um, I think he'd be very dis I'd be very disappointed. And I think he is as well. I thought defensively, we were actually pretty good. Um, on the most part, I thought we defended very well. I thought uh, Cody Kilman and Saiz put in some excellent blocks. I thought Kilman and Cody were got Saiz was a little bit hit and miss at points, but overall I thought we were pretty solid. I thought Samedo was very good until he had to come off injured. And I thought Johnny was okay. Aitnori again was okay. I think it was just the general tactical setup that we had. We went up 1-0 up after 10 minutes and then just really regressed into what we did before under Nuno, which was just sit back completely for, for 80, 80 odd minutes. It was atrocious, really poor, poor mentality. Let Arsenal dominate the game. Um, we weren't helped, though, it has to be said, by 
some of the worst, worst officiating I've seen all season. And that rings true for both sides. I think that um, both sets of fans can come out of that game feeling aggrieved with the decisions that were made. And I think that says it all. Um, I don't think the Arsenal penalty shouts at the start, right at the start of the game, I don't think that was ever a penalty. I don't even think Samedo touched him. Um, I know Arsenal fans will probably disagree with that. But, you know, <laughs> we're both on the opposing, opposing fan bases. So I suppose that's kind of guaranteed. Um, but apart from that, just really, really stupid things like fouls not being called, handballs not being called. Neto's shot uh, was deflected off uh, Gabriel Magalhaes. It should have been a corner. Um, you know, and then Arsenal go up a, a couple of minutes later and score. It's just really, really frustrating. Um, you can't blame it on the officials. I don't think the officials helped. I think it was a real mixture of a, a very, very poor performance and the officials. But I just don't think we, we did anything. I think Neves and Matinho really struggled in midfield. Neves, I think... He put in a couple of good long passes, but so sloppy in possession, really uncharacteristic from him and Matinho, giving the ball away constantly. It was just a very, very poor quality performance. And I think we really we got what we deserved. I think it's, it's gutting to lose it in the last minute. But when you put in a performance like that, I don't think we deserved anything out of the game. Um, but having said that, I think that, you know, we're still in the race for the Europa League, which is, I think it's probably more our level. Um, and I know that obviously we all really wanted to try and push for the top four, which is still mathematically possible. But I think the Europa League or the Conference League, any Wolves fan would take that. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's it's a performance that we can hopefully dust under the carpet uh, and and recover from it and put in a much better performance against West Ham because we're going to have to do that. Um, I thought that you know it was it was uh, it was self inflicted today and Jose saw our own goal as well, which. Um, I think it was pretty harsh to say it was an own goal, but it was going wide and he didn't know that. But yeah, two two poor bits of defending, I think, for the for both goals. Far too easy for Arsenal to cut us open. Um, when you sit back for that amount of time, I think it was kind of predictable what was going to happen. So yeah, disappointing, poor officiating, but a poor performance. I think we really need to turn it around for the West Ham game on Sunday. Still Europe to compete with. At the end of the day, if we get back into Europe, I think all Wolves fans will be happy with that. Just really, really tough one to take tonight.